Good morning. Welcome to your worship today as again we gather under God's grace to, to worship him for the blessing of his son and the salvation that we have in his name. A special welcome to all our guests and visitors that might be with us today. Uh, just an invitation if you'd like to find out some more information about our service, stop by our welcome desk on the way out and we can answer any questions and also give you some materials. Also one note to our members and also to our guests, you should have a card that was laying there with your bulletins. I mean, you fill that out and also put that into the offering plates that you see on the, on the aisles as you, are, as you are leaving. That would be a real blessing to us. Uh, today's a special service. It's a service that recognizes the beginning of our school year. Uh, we'll be installing um, uh, Amy Greener as our principal and also some new teachers that we have with us uh, this year. Uh, Vera Abresh, uh, Mariah Rock will be uh, also installed today. Uh, we have one more new teacher that was not feel a little bit under the weather today, so unfortunately she could not be here, Mackenzie Denny. Uh, but again, we'll keep her uh, in our prayers. Also, uh, a thank you to Ron Dreyer and all those that were involved. I don't know if you noticed, we have some holes in the wall. That was not by accident. That was planned that we have some holes in the wall in the back. Those are going to turn into windows, and maybe you appreciated walking in and be able to see, you know, the altar and the church as you came in, along with all the ceiling tiles in here were replaced too. And so a lot of, a big job was accomplished uh, in the last couple of weeks. We thank him for that. And also one more note, uh, there's an auction that's coming up that's been put off, but again now rescheduled and changed a little bit because it's going to be done from our parking lot. So it's a drive-in auction, and that's next Sunday. So look in your bulletins and you'll notice the details there uh, to be part of that. Again, today we are blessed in... God being with us and him, we in his presence and also um, the beginning of our school year. Um, our service starts today as we begin with our opening uh, song. Please stand.
we begin today in that name that is so worthy because we understand the blessing that has come by God's name. It reminds us also of our baptism where God brought us into his family. We begin in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, you have taught me to
The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1 and 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel lesson comes from Matthew chapter 15. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the congregation may be seated, and we thank uh, Vera and Stacy and Rachel for sharing God's word with us this morning. And it is a long-standing tradition of suburban Bethlehem that today on the opening day of the school year, that we also uh, signify the handing down of God's word to the next generation. So I invite all the students and parents of kindergarten students, third grade students, and seventh grade students to stand as well as uh, any new students in any of the grades and their parents to also please stand. Yes, yeah, students too. <laughs> we rejoice because uh, in this celebration, the kindergarten students and new students in grades one and two receive a children's Bible. Uh, that is a, a Bible with a number of pictures and a very beautiful description of God's Word. Uh, students in third grade and new students in four, five, and six receive the Faith Alive Bible. And then students in seventh grade and any new students in eighth grade receive the Lutheran Study Bible. Uh, very detailed and in-depth notes for the study of God's Word. 
and parents, I invite you to, to place the Bibles, if you haven't done so already, to place those Bibles in the hands of your kids. Because you, the parents, have been the ones are, who are responsible and are responsible for teaching the faith to the next generation. We, your children's teachers and pastors and church staff, we are here to assist you. We thank God for your faithful and loving work in bringing God's word to this next generation. And I have in front of me here today a Bible that I received many years ago, I believe when I was a freshman in college, and then it wasn't until a few years later when I was in my last year at the seminary, 27 years ago, that someone first told me, have one Bible that you use all the time, write in it, highlight it, uh, write notes to yourself, uh, write questions in there, highlight passages. And it dawned on me, well, yeah. And 27 years later, this is the Bible I still use all the time. And you can see, well, it has shown the, the test of time. I pray that those Bibles that you have now, kids in your hands, are Bibles that will be used frequently. Feel free to write in there. Feel free to highlight passages you love. Feel free to write questions that you have. Because it is all part of digging into God's Word and living God's Word of love. For this is His message of grace to you. Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word, your word that tells us about you, your death and your resurrection for me and how I, Lord, am your child and forgiven of all my sin. Help, Lord, these new students and help these students growing in their wisdom and knowledge of you to continue, Lord, to grow in your mercy and love for them. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the we, children's message. We ask the kids to stay in the pew this morning. We ask Miss Meester to come forward for the children's message. The children's message today comes from Joshua 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So we probably all can think of a hero that we have in our lives. And when we think of a hero, we probably have a series of characteristics that we would use to describe them. So I made a list here. And maybe you have other words that would be added. And maybe these are the same words that you would have too. But brave, strong, faces their fears, defends people, is really good at something, is courageous and, and smart. And like I said, there's a lot of other adjectives we could add to that. So heroes tend to be our best our brightest, and our smartest people that we have around us. And one of those heroes that we had was Joshua, which our Bible verse for today was, um, is found in his book. And Joshua had a lot of different roles in the Bible. He was a military commander. You probably have heard of Joshua in the Battle of Jericho. But he took out a lot of other people. Do you know if I'm right? Was it six kings and 31 tribes? Six kings and 31 tribes over his military campaign. He was a political leader, and he wasn't just any old political leader, but he had to follow Moses, and he was Moses' assistant. So that's pretty big shoes to follow. He was the spy in going into the promised land, and he, along with Caleb, said, hey, listen, we can do this whenever the other spies said there was no way. And he had his life being born in Egypt and going all the way through until the Israelites arrived in the promised land and had that given to them. So he saw a lot throughout his lifetime. But when Whenever we're looking at this verse, we're looking at the start of that career that he has as a political leader where it's being transitioned from Moses to Joshua. And if you look at Joshua chapter 1, God doesn't just say be strong and courageous one time, but he says it three times, giving that advice to Joshua as he goes. We all face things times that are tough, times that are new, times that change, and we might think when we face them, these things, the risks they're too high. The decisions, they're too much. And the expectations, they're too crushing. But just like Joshua heard those words, be strong and courageous, God has given them to us as well. Listen to Joshua 1.9 again. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
When you listen to it, there are four commands, but then one promise. God's telling Joshua and the people of Israel to be strong, courageous, not frightened, and not dismayed. But then he leaves it with that promise that no matter what, he is going to be there. And he's the one that gives that courage, the strength. He takes away the fear, and he takes away the dismay. So use that to guide you this week as well. Just as God promised Joshua, so does God promise you. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest. Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he Grace, mercy, and peace be yours this day from God, our Heavenly Father, and He is Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join with me in a word of prayer this morning. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we have begun a new school year, a school year, Lord, begun under very challenging circumstances, we pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit this year would continue to encourage and strengthen us, Lord, that we would be living the truth of your promise and encouragement to Joshua to be strong and courageous. And now may these words of this preacher's mouth and meditation of our hearts, Lord, be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The word of God before us today is that theme verse that Miss Meissner has already talked about from Joshua 1, verse 9, be strong and courageous. So I should begin with the first part, haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. 
as we begin to dig into God's Word this morning, a question for you to ponder and kind of have sitting in the back of your mind as we go through this is, how can Lazarus help us understand Joshua? How can Lazarus, the guy raised from the dead, help us understand Joshua? As we dig in to Joshua chapter 1, we recognize it is a challenging time. Just like this beginning of this school year is a challenging time, unlike really beginning of any school year that any of us can ever remember. Who knows? There is so much uncertainty about what is yet to come. Who knows how exactly things are going to play out in the next weeks and months and throughout the entire year. Who knows except God alone? And so we begin this year recognizing that we don't quite have every question answered. The certainty does not rest in ourselves, but in Jesus. And so there's a number of people who need to hear to be strong and courageous. I ask all of our staff members, school teachers and church staff members, if you guys would please stand. You know, other years we've sung a song together on opening school day Sunday. We're not doing that this year, so I had to find a way to make sure they stood in part of the service today. But these are individuals who need to be strong and courageous as you lead, as you teach, as you encourage. You guys maybe see, but there's, there's still more people who need to be strong and courageous. Kids, if you guys could stand. All the students, if you could stand. Don't be afraid. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Just go ahead and be strong and courageous yourself. There you go. You also need to be strong and courageous. I mean, you ate lunch already three times this week in ways in which we never, ever thought about eating lunch. You have all these different restrictions and stuff going on. God would say to you today, be strong and courageous. Now you guys can sit down, and moms and dads, parents, you stand up. Parents of kids in our school. We not only praise and thank you for being part of this vital ministry and choosing Suburban Bethlehem Lutheran School as the educational partners of your children, but we also praise God for your patience and understanding. So many things are so different. So many patience is, is the number one commodity needed this year. God bless you, and God be with you so that you also are strong and courageous. Now, you may sit down, and by the way, no one else is going to have to stand, so in case you're wondering and have to pay attention for when you have to stand, you're, you're, you're okay, you're free and clear, all right? But notice what's happening here with Joshua. As Miss Meester kind of already opened up for us, these were strange and difficult times. Imagine being 79 years old and now being called to be the leader of God's people. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands this morning who is at least 79 years of age, but I know who you are and I know where you're sitting as well. But just imagine that. You've been assistant to someone no less than Moses for the last 40 years. You have witnessed a whole variety of things. The crossing of the Red Sea, water from rock, manna and quail from heaven. And now, Moses, the faithful servant of God, has died. And the Lord is tapping you on the shoulder. Lead my people into the promised land. Though Joshua could not exactly tell how exactly the next weeks and months and years were going to unfold, but God would see him through triumph and tragedy. God would see him through the, the, the population of the promised land. God would see him as the one who is uh, the faithful one, passing on the faith to the next generation, encouraging people to be growing together in the relationship with our Savior. Joshua would, day in and day out, be living this word of God to him as he begins to take up leadership. Have I not commanded you? 
be strong and courageous. Strength and courage are exactly the things that we need now. And I'm not just talking about an uncertain future because of a global pandemic. Who of us knows what the rest of today will bring for us, let alone the rest of the school year? But we can rest in the certainty of knowing that Jesus knows and that Jesus will continue to tell us. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. But how is it that we can be strong and courageous? You know, this isn't God kind of saying, all right, folks, suck it up somehow internally and determine within yourself that you're going to be strong and courageous. Build yourself up. <laughs> no, that's not what God does. Because God knows we can never do it. If we go just one verse prior to this, in Joshua 1, verse 8, we have God telling Joshua, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to, be, to do everything written in it. Then you'll be profit, prosperous and successful. Haven't I commanded you to be strong and courageous? All right? God connects, hey, Joshua, this strength and courage comes from my word. Meditate on it. Dig deep into it. Delve in there to see how I am the one who is continuing to pour out upon you a spirit not of timidity, but of power and peace, of love and self-discipline. Quoting Paul later on in 2 Timothy 1. Now you see what God tells Joshua there is to meditate on God's word. The word there for meditate isn't a word that kind of gives us the picture of, well, let's sit back and imagine about God's word. No, it's a, a word of a very intense, personal digging into the word of God, almost as if you are repeating the word of God under your breath, kind of gives us rise for memory work. Kids, this isn't something we've invented in this age. We've had it around for generations. This is about taking God's word to heart, to know it, to rejoice that in that word of God, we are discovering Jesus Christ, his son, our Savior. For the other thing that God would tell us is how he makes us strong and courageous is that he is with us. God isn't the God who stands aloof with his arms folded and says, let's see if you guys can figure this one out. No, he's the God who jumps in. It shouldn't surprise us that the God who tells Joshua, I am with you wherever you go, is the same God who would take on human flesh. The same God who would become incarnate in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. The same God who spoke the word of creation is the same God who in Christ would have to learn how to speak and to read. The same God who put together how all of our muscles function together is the same God who would have to learn how to stand on his own feet and walk. For that is how much he is with us. He is one of us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. That God says, because I am with you. Be strong and courageous. Now what does it mean to be strong and courageous? Does it mean we should bend and force everyone to conform to our ways, our wants, our desires? Well, hardly. We see and answer what it means to be strong and courageous by the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. To be strong and courageous is all about living the light of Christ in us and through us. To be strong and courageous is to be kind and compassionate, to be filled with the fruits of the Spirit. 
Remember? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, love, self-control. To be strong and courageous is to be humble and kind. To bring the word of Jesus. To bring the word of love and grace. To encourage someone else. To let them know that they also are loved by God. To let them know that there is a Savior and Redeemer for each and every one of their sins, even the sins of which they are so sorrowful and so ashamed of. To be strong and courageous is to live the cross of Jesus Christ in our lives. So how is it? How is it that a guy who is four days dead can help us understand what it means to be strong and courageous? Remember Lazarus in the New Testament? John 11, to be precise. Dead for four days, Jesus, in fact, his friend, delayed, deliberately delayed coming. Let him die. Well, Jesus knew what was going to be happening, what he was going to do. But how can a guy who is four days dead help us understand to be strong and courageous? Well, here's how. Why don't you have a mental picture in your mind? John 11 says, you know, Jesus went to Lazarus' grave, and he called out, Lazarus, come forth. And there comes Lazarus walking out of the grave, walking out of the tomb. What is behind Lazarus as he does that? Death is behind Lazarus. And what is in front of Lazarus? Who is in front of Lazarus? Jesus. And life in Jesus. And so we live to be strong and courageous. We live rejoicing that, that death is behind us. Jesus and life is in front of us. Now, you might be saying, Pastor, wait a second. Have you lost your marbles this morning? Because the day is going to come when this body is going to die unless our Lord returns first. And you're absolutely right. But there's a far worse, more sinister death. We have already died. And a death from which we have already been raised. In John chapter 5, Jesus says... Whoever lives and believes, or whoever believes me in him who sent me, has already crossed over from death to life. Truly I say to you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear my voice, and the dead who hear my voice shall live. We have already been raised from the death of sin. We have already been raised from the death of sin to life in Jesus Christ. Death is behind us. Jesus and life is in front of us. Be strong and courageous. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And we are strong and courageous as we install our new principal and new teachers. I invite them to come forward. And also for Dr. David Reinhardt, chairman of our congregation, and Justin Hoffman, chairman of our school board, to join us in this as well. And as Pastor Alex has already alluded to, we are missing one of our new teachers this morning, uh, Mackenzie Denny, who unfortunately woke up this morning ill. She has no fever, so we do not believe it is COVID-related, just to make sure everyone feels comfortable with that. Uh, we do continue to keep her in our prayers. A few things to note about our right of insulation this morning. The first thing is that 
Uh, two of these individuals are rostered church workers of Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and therefore we ask them to confess and state publicly their belief within the Lutheran Church, that is, using the confessional documents of our history from the 1500s, the names of which will be listed, and perhaps there is one that needs just a brief explanation, one name that sounds a bit odd, that I want to let you know that we do not believe in. The tract does not encourage us to believe that, but to speak against that, and that is the treatise on the power and the primacy of the Pope. That is not something in which we believe, but based on the word of God, reject. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, Vera Abresh and Amy Greener have been properly elected and called to serve as teacher and principal, respectively, and Mariah Rockwell has been properly chosen as a teacher of Suburban Bethlehem Lutheran Church and School. These offices have been established in love by the church to support the office of the holy ministry and to assist and strengthen Christian fathers and mothers in their God-given responsibility to bring up their children in the nurture and instruction of the Lord, and to assist the faithful in their God-given vocation. I invite you to hear the word of God concerning this office. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Hear these words from Colossians 3. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And Vera and Amy, we ask you the following questions for you to give witness to the divine call our Lord Jesus Christ has issued you through this congregation and which you have joyfully accepted. Mariah, we ask you the same questions so you can give evidence of your faithful following of the same Lord Jesus Christ and his word. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely, the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures, and do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. And this question is for Vera and Amy. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of the Holy Scripture? and a whole and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the, small, of the uh, Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? And this is for all three of you. Do you solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in the teaching ministry in accordance with the scripture and for Vera and Amy with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? And now you, members of Suburban Bethlehem Lutheran Church and School, you have heard the confession and the solemn promise of Vera Abresh and Amy Greener, who have been called to the office of teacher and principal in the church, and also of Mariah Rockwell, who has been chosen as teacher. I ask you now in the presence of God, will you receive them, show them fitting love and honor, and support them by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, then answer by saying, we will with the help of God. 
And the Almighty, most merciful God, strengthen and assist you always. And now are you ready and willing to assume the work of this office? I invite you to come forward and kneel in turn. And we will do a virtual laying on of hands. Amy Greener, I install you as principal of Suburban Bethlehem Lutheran Church and School in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mariah Rockwell, I place you as teacher of Suburban Bethlehem Lutheran Church and School in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Vera Abresh, I install you as teacher of Suburban Bethlehem Lutheran Church and School in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise as we join together in a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for, as you always have, for answering our prayers and bringing to us these dedicated servants to serve you and the teaching of your word. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen and to encourage them to, in all things, Lord, lift them up by your Holy Spirit through your word that they may see your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and receiving him, Lord, be rejoicing in his presence in their lives and his grace for them. Bless the work of their hands. Bless the, 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 the words that they teach that, Lord, in all things, we would be lifting high your cross and your resurrection. For we pray in your holy name. Amen. And haven't I commanded you, be strong and courageous. We give thanks to God appropriately as we thank and praise him this morning. In congregation, I invite you at some point after the service to make sure you greet these new servants of our Lord and continue to be praying for them to rejoicing in his love. We continue our worship as our offering is presented. We join in prayer. Dear Lord, as you spoke to your servant and he took it to heart, as you encouraged Joshua to be strong and courageous, may we also take those words to heart in our own lives that we also understand that we can be courageous because you are with us wherever you go. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those outside the kingdom for missionaries near and far, including Stephen Cindy Schumacher, for the ministries and agencies of our church, whereby the gospel is spoken to those who have not heard, and for those who hear, that they may be brought to faith. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all pastors and church workers, including our teachers uh, and school staff. We ask that you continue to be with them, that they stand strong and concur and. and, uh, and strong and courageous, and also that you continue to lead them in all that they do. We also pray for those that are preparing for full-time church work and for those considering church work vocations. And we ask your blessing on those installed today serving in our school ministry. Amy Greener as principal, Vera Abresh, sixth grade teacher, Mariah Rockwell, first grade, 
And also we ask you to bless Mackenzie Denny, who will be teaching third grade as she is, could not be with us today. Bring healing to her. We also pray for all families and students that we partner with in our school ministry. Grant them encouragement and peace as we enter the school year under conditions we haven't experienced before. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our school ministry board as they continue to lead and direct the running of our school. In these difficult times, grant them wisdom in the year ahead. We do thank you for these servants who partner with us in the Christian education ministry. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all families and members of this congregation, including, including Danielle Coburn family, Ryan and Susan Harmeyer family, Sally Hutchinson, Jody Kaiser, Gary and Amy Maves, and Eric and Katie Rentschler. We pray for husband and wives to live in faithfulness to each other, for all mothers with child, for all children, and for those who bring them to baptism and nurture them in the faith, including Jordan and Case Melman, who bring their daughter Haley Jo to the waters of baptism after this service today. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our president, the Congress, our governor, all elected and appointed leaders, all judges and magistrates, the members of the armed forces, including Vanessa Carson and Nathan Deerig, Sam Jank, Bryce Canning, Jack Kidd, and Dakota Schaefer. We ask that you'd keep them safe along with those who serve on the police force, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel. Continue to watch over them as they carry out their duties to protect and serve us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the healing of the sick, the re relief of the suffering, especially Arloa Elvey, uh, Bernie Bollinger, Terry Hudson, Dorothy Linnemeyer, Dorothy Nitz, Michael Dauscher, Kelly Bratton, Linda Rupp, Virgil Springer, and Mackenzie Denny. We ask that you continue to bring confidence and, and hope and encouragement to those who deal with cancer in their lives, including Carla Hoff, Gary Baldus, Diana Clifford, Ed Clifford, Dennis Crow, Doris Gordon, Jeff Lopnow, Serene Lopnow, and Jaden White. We also pray that you bring comfort to those who mourn the loss of loved ones, including the family of Bonnie Bolt Boltemeyer and the family of Donna Springer, the mother of Lori Schwarz. Continue to uplift them in the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, giver of all that is good, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your grace that we may endure the changes and chances of this mortal life and be found worthy when our Savior comes to bring completion of all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you always with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.